Assalamu alaikum and good evening. Welcome to today's episode of Talking Point. I'm your host, Sayyid Niaz Ahmed. In our studios today, we have a gentleman who has traveled five hours from his home to reach here. He is Justice of Peace Zafaruddin from Millsborough. He's an active social worker, very active in the Labour Party and also in the community. He went to the University of Teesside. He obtained his graduation from Sunderland and also did a number of courses at Open University. He's involved in uh, local activities as well as the Labour Party at local uh, level, but also in many ways at national level. He, is, he was vice chair of the Middlesbrough CAB, Citizens Advice Bureau. Now he is a member of the Board of Trustees. He is also a member of the Middlesbrough Mela Committee, chair for four years and vice chair for three years. He is chair of the management committee of the Community Language Mao uh, Shishi Unan. Shishu. Mother and Child Development. Mm -hmm. uh, if I went on, I will spend the whole evening how many organizations he heads and chairs and is a member of. Welcome to the show, sir. How are you? Fine, thank you. Yeah. How was the thank journey you. from Mirzbara? Five hours, you said. It was okay, actually. Yeah, it was more or less five hours, yeah. Did you drive? Uh, okay. did you no, I didn't, I didn't drive, actually. I used the train, then obviously, and, you know, the local, obviously, local transport as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How is the weather in, in Middleborough? Uh, it wasn't too bad this morning, actually. Yeah, it was quite good, yeah. Generally, obviously, in the north. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm not sure whether you know. <laughs> Usually north, actually, with all, you know. And, but today it was fantastic, yeah, when I came, yeah. Well, it's, mm -hmm. it, see, it seems that in London we used to, uh, we get the best of everything. Here. You d unfortunately, you do, <laughs> yes. Well, for us, you know, unfortunately, you do as said. Yeah, in the north, actually, it is a bit cooler than London. Right. When I came today, obviously, yes. I, f I felt quite warm. It may be because yeah. of the English Channel. Maybe, <laughs> maybe so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Zafaruddin, uh, where did this journey begin? Mm -hmm. Uh, you, you back in Bangladesh when you came back to this country. When did you come to this country? First of all, thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me for your show today. And I'm really honored and privileged to be here it's, today. It's an honor and a and privilege. Sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first, uh, first time I came in 1975. My, my parents were here. My, my father was here mm -hmm. for then about 30 years. Yes. And myself, my two younger brothers and my sister, we, mm -hmm. my mom, we joined my dad in 75, right. October 75. Then uh, obviously, you know, started uh, school and college. I was 18. I couldn't go to school at that point. So right. I needed to do some, yeah. the adult education, if you like. Right. And uh, yeah, from there on, actually, we just uh, carried on, you know, and, yep. and as I could, you know, so what, more or less. What sort of life was then? I mean, in 1975 in Middleborough. I think it was obviously definitely for me it was a bit of cultural shock, you know, yeah, yeah. and coming from the Eastern country as well, just as young as eighteen, you know, I thought it was a bit difficult. But my father was very, very good, mm -hmm. and he kept us up to date, and I was explained, you know, day to day basis, you know, the culture, and, you know, I mean everything, you know, they tried to fit us in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I found, you know, it took me still a few, a few months to get used to the things. And especially the language, it took me quite a while. Cause I couldn't speak English when I first came here. And I could read and write, but I couldn't really pull in. Yeah, the a lot of people can speak English, but they're not the kind of English that is spoken here. Certainly. Yeah, it it's, it's, it's a matter of yeah. being understood mm -hmm. and understanding both. Certainly, yeah. yeah, right. So, mm -hmm. so you went to a school uh, as an adult? Uh, as an adult, yeah, but the evening classes mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. you know. Then obviously the start of the you know, journey into sort of adult education initially. I did beginning with about seven months to just learn English. And uh, my father said to me, well, yeah, I mean, uh, from back home, I did actually up to in intermediate, yeah? Right. And the first of all, I said, well, I was born in Mishrai, mm -hmm. yeah, my village, Mishrai, mm -hmm. it's very prominent in the Chittagong. It's part of Chittagong, yes. Yes, Mishrai, Chittagong. So uh, when- Is it in Upazila now? Uh, Mishra is Upazila now, yes. yes. Yeah. Mishra and what? Well, it's two part now, you know, the two, two, mm -hmm. two, two, two districts. Mm -hmm. Mishra and another one, Juraragunj, I understand. Mm -hmm. 
the north, you know, moisture in north used to be. So yeah, when I first came, I did the intermediate mm -hmm. in, in Nijampu College, which mm -hmm. one again, as you know, one of the best colleges in our area at the it time. Is named after mm -hmm. Mr. War Nizam, uh, or the name, name of the place. I suppose it was, but I'm not quite sure actually, mm -hmm. you know, obviously Nizampur, so Nizam, who yes. was the probably prominent figure at that right. time, you know, yes. it was built many years ago. Our dad, and, you know, my father, yes. my uncle, and they all, they went, all to went to the school, school yes. you know, obviously, yeah. So it was well before <coughs> my time. Mm -hmm. So as I started back home, and unfortunately I got involved in small politics, yep. you know, student politics, right. as people do at the time, at the then, uh, somebody obviously told my dad, Mm -hmm. My dad was here, and dad didn't like it, obviously, no. You want to do it, 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 politics, or you want to do whatever, but you need to first complete your education. Right. So just before intermediate exam, my father said, no, you're coming back here, come in here. Not back, sorry, he said, you're coming to England. We tried, you know, right. he tried for a while and everything in process. So he just all of a sudden... It's a change of scene for you. Change of scene for me, because he wouldn't let me have the exam, because he said, Wasting time because you're in politics. I don't want you to do that politics. Mm -hmm. yeah. So therefore, obviously, we agreed and uh, we said fine. So we came here, and as I said, culture, initially it would be a cultural shock, but gradually. But, but moved you on. took your time when you wanted to do politics, and you did enter politics in this country. At, uh, at the <laughs> end, actually, yeah. As I said, you know, that said to me then even, and if you want to do politics, I have no objection. But right. you but must you stand on your, your feet. Education first. Yeah, education first. You got to realize whatever you do, you got to have your own family. You got to maintain your family. Right. So that's the, your independence. The first lesson that told me. So you got to prepare for it. Then you do whatever you want to do. C can I also say? I mean, at the time sure. as well, I was involved in some sort of uh, acting as well. Right. And and I did get some uh, offer as well from the one of the Indian company. Right. And the dad wouldn't have it. He said, "No, a child from my family." Uh, unfortunately, you cannot go into <laughs> that. <laughs> so that will well, me. <laughs> well, you, you, you're doing very well. <laughs> Politics is kind of acting, isn't it? <laughs> it is, yeah. Then again, that, obviously, that wanted me to be uh, you know, some sort of politician at the end. But again, you know, after my education and so on. So I did. I listened to that. And uh, obviously, I worked on it. And obviously, I'm here. Although local, on the local level. <laughs> uh, you are also serving as a member of NHS Foundation Trust for mm -hmm. since 2009, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. Uh, what, yeah. This what, is this is that? the sorry. This is the foundation. Obviously, they look at uh, the their annual budget, and obviously, I might not be able to tell you, you know, what budget. Right. They look at the annual budget, and they look at their annual program, and they review it. And again, we get involved in that. Obviously, we attend, you know, every so often. It's not the regular meeting, you know. Every mm -hmm. so often, mm -hmm. then we have a sort of you know annual meeting as well. So it's a look at all this, you know, how they managed full year, first year, and what needs to be done for the following year. So obviously there's a board of people as well, and I'm one of their members as well with them. Well, so and also mm -hmm. a, a, as a member of the community, you're mm -hmm. also vice chair of the Red Card and Cleveland Islamic and Quranic Cultural uh, Association. Uh, you were there until nine, right. 2010, oh, yeah. isn't that's it? That's right, yeah. Uh, I was the initially, obviously, uh, that's again, if I can just give you the brief details on the, yeah. on, on the, on the Islamic Cultural Association. When we first came, we obviously the prayed in our other mosque, other right. neighborhood mosque. We didn't have one with our Bangladeshi community. So what our the sort of uh, parent at the time and elders did, they look at some provision somewhere. So that one of the gentlemen is professionally his uh, GP. Mm -hmm. And he was fantastic. He said, well, this is the opportunity. We'll get into it somehow. If people are there, we can certainly work on it. And we'll do something for our own, for the Bangladeshi community. Right. So he basically he was the gentleman, the founder of this uh, Islamic association. Mm -hmm. Then we had, obviously, our parents and some other parents, pa friends, and the senior colleagues and everybody got involved. And one of the gentlemen, unfortunately, died a few years ago. He offered us a place. He's above his takeaway, he had a takeaway because there wasn't an accommodation at that point. So he offered us a place free of charge. He said, you start Islamic Association, which obviously the underlying principle was teaching our children Islamic, yep. you yep. know, these sort of aspects and the praying five times and, and the, you know, the Jumar prayer prayers. So we did that on 
on the takeaway, uh, above the takeaway. It's about, about 30 or 40 people at the time, right. regular attendance. When was that? That was in uh, 1985. Right. 85. Mm -hmm. And as I said, senior members, they were involved. And we were, in the yeah. youngsters, you know, we were few of us involved in that time. Did you have but enough people to... At the time, it's, uh, the active, active people were there, about 30, 40. Mm -hmm. But there were quite a wider community at that time as well. Mm -hmm. You know, so what we had, say, on Friday Jumas, we used to have, say, about 30, 40 people. Yeah. Then the eighth time, we couldn't, you know, have them all of because course. at the time, although <coughs> in uh, Middlesbrough, I mean, we are in, in, in this side, basically, we are minority, we are in minority. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we, we really struggle with the different, you know, sort of um, opportunities, if you like. So this gentleman obviously came forward and he said, well, I want to work on it and I want people to be involved. And believe me, then people would wholeheartedly, everybody got involved. And one of the gentlemen was secretary for 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. Then later years, he became a chair. Mm -hmm. And with, alongside with the original chair, who was a founder member, then obviously we all worked together. And our task at the time was like working full time as well as going out, meeting communities, meeting with the people, liaising with the local authorities, and get things what need to be done. So everybody together, it was a fantastic opportunity. And people at the community at the time were so pleased that they got somewhere to pray their own. They could say, we had a Bangladesh, Bangladeshi mosque here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But again, it's, I mean, no, no disrespect to all of this. Mm -hmm. And we go every mosque. You right. know, there's no problem at all. But it was a local one for the Bangladeshi community at the time. There were so many people in, in sort of that particular area. So uh, when you say Bangladeshi mosque, I mean, uh, you mean that Organized by the Bangladesh. Organized by, as I said, founder was the one of the yes. Bangladeshi prominent yes. senior, senior member but of the community. Obviously, anybody mm. is welcome. Everyone's welcome, <laughs> yes. <laughs> obviously, we have, you know, I mean, at the moment, it's chilly. Then again, if I can lead on to that, uh, since then, in 2004, what we did, we bought another property because our community is getting, you know, right. the larger and, and bigger and bigger. So we bought another property, ground floor. This was the above the takeaway. Right. And obviously we thanked this gentleman and he was fantastic. Honestly, he was. And you know, it just allowed us to, you know, to use and settle. So we thought, you know, some extent we were settled. Right. And we didn't get any money from the government or any statutory organization. It's money all come from mostly people, you know, like sort of contributed, yeah. contributed by the community members. And that same mosque at the one unit we had in 2004, then recently, well last year, we bought another property next to it because we have, there were used to have 70 or 80 people. Now we had at least three, 350 people mm -hmm. attending sort of occasionally and the eighth time as well. Is it, is it because well. new people have come in? It's like a new people from, I mean, obviously it was mainly was in South Bank. Is increasing in population. Sorry, yeah. It was like in South Bank and the people from the area because traditionally South Bank known as the Bangladeshi community. Mm -hmm. so even if say, if you're, from, if you're from Middlesbrough, then people would ask you, oh, are you from South Bank? Because traditionally, because the industries, you know, the factories in you know, all around and mm -hmm. people obviously in the early 50s when they arrived, they worked obviously and more, more people sort of on, in the factories and so on, you know, and uh, in the steel factories. And, but now they're all gone, obviously. But still, the, uh, the, the existence is still there. Mm -hmm. We used to have, I was talking about the other day with some, uh, the, some of the pay colleagues, uh, we used to have about 80, 90 families in that particular area. And then now we have it's about 20 families. But people from other, you know, surrounding town, it's the main Middlesbrough, as well as the right current Cleveland, Stockton, Yam, and uh, some people from Darlington as well, you know, like this valley. So, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I've said some, so most people now from surrounding. And now we got the second property and we're developing. We initially estimated about 110 to 120,000, but unfortunately, because of this, uh, obviously, the, the stuff and, and the prices, you know, current rates and things like this, we already spent about 150,000 pounds. Right. So uh, apart from uh, the mosque and this building being used as a mosque, do you have other activities go going on? We there? obviously, at the time we did, we had uh, sort of, uh, because of this, the uh, small the property, and we could not accommodate the, the, the demand, you know? But what right. we did, once in a while, if we had a gathering, Islamic gathering, then we had obviously all the female and male separate, obviously, you know, they, they, they sort right. of in, in, integrated together, then the, for the children activities. But now we got the new plan, as I said. Right. We got like up to now, it's worked so hard. I mean, I must say, the people are there, the chair, the secretary, and the whole management committee, as well as our current imam, 
as fantastic. They're doing a fantastic work. And obviously I'm part of it as well, right. everybody together. And we brought up to here. Now we said another three months or so, we will win full pledge. You see, for any development so work, as you said, that mm -hmm. you need to have a team. See. Certainly, Not yeah. one person yeah. can do it. Certainly, certainly not. So we are about to go for a break. Yeah. And when we come mm -hmm. back, we'll yeah. definitely talk about more about uh, your mm -hmm. activities as mm -hmm. a social worker and, and the mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the beginning, I talked about Mao, Shishu, Nayan, yeah. this Mosom, yeah. Mother and Child Development. What is it? I mean, we want to talk about what does it do? Yeah. I mean, we, we yeah. does, is it community-based or is it... Uh, like uh, broad based like it involves all the communities or just Bangladeshi communities when yeah. we come back we'll do that totally. yeah no problem okay, okay thank you thank you very thank much, you. much for being with us and uh, we'll come back after this short break thank you don't go away